A lot of people have been complaining that Amazon's Rings of Power costumes look pretty mediocre to downright bad. I made a few videos critiquing the outfits, but I want to shine a light on the more tangible, objective reasons why the costumes may seem underwhelming. I want to give examples of what works, what doesn't, and why that is. There is a lot of ground to cover in order to explain why a costume might look bad. In this video, I want to focus specifically on the lines. How geometry in a costume can make it come across visually, what impressions we get of a garment, depending on the lines it includes, and how those lines work together. So, let's get into it. What makes a good costume? And in this case, we're talking more specifically about the genres of fantasy and historical fiction, but a lot of this will apply to movie costumes in general. Firstly, I would echo something I said in a previous video. A good costume shouldn't look like a costume, but like a real garment. Believable costumes are well-made, use suitable materials, are constructed not only with the aesthetic purpose in mind, but also aim to be functional for the character and his or her environment. Materials and fabric used are incredibly important since they will either convince the audience or make them sense that something is off, that the character is out of place, doesn't fully fit into that fictional time with the rest of the characters, and so on. Symbolism and aesthetics play an important role too, but more vital part is functionality. Practicality is sort of optional or depends on the character or the story, but the functionality is not. Functionality refers to something basically serving its purpose. Elven garments from The Lord of the Rings, with their long sleeves and trains, may not be practical, but they do serve a purpose to the people who are wearing them, since the purpose in this case is not tied to practicality. Like being able to do physical labor, going on a long journey, because the elves we see here don't have that lifestyle. And when they do go on the road, they dress a bit differently. Their costumes were designed with function in mind. If we take a look at the real world, even garments from, let's say, the Baroque era worn by nobility that seem anything but functional to our modern sensibilities were in fact not pure inconvenience to the people who wore them. Every item had a role to play. Undergarments were made of materials that were affordable and sturdy, that could sustain a lot of regular washing. Stays, the precursor of a corset, were not made to restrict breathing, but were far more comfortable than they look and served as support garments. Dresses were designed in layers, they were not just one big blob of fabric, despite what many Halloween costumes want to make us believe. Closures allowed for adjustments and were designed with the idea in mind that people lose and gain weight throughout their lives. In the past, there was so much more emphasis on sustainability, and clothes were designed to be worn by real people in real circumstances. All costumes should follow this idea in order to come across as authentic as possible. Sure, you're going to put historically inaccurate zippers on some dresses so that actors can get in and out of them faster, and maybe you'll alter an aspect of the garment to allow for more movement if the character needs it. And you'll take some creative liberties in the designs of fictional garments, sure, but the backbone, the silhouette, should always be in place. It's not just about cramming a person into a garment that maybe looks good aesthetically, but provides little functionality. Aesthetics amount to nothing if the costume as a whole is not tailored to the wearer and is not designed with the character's story arc and lifestyle in mind. Which brings me to my second point. A good costume helps bring a character to life. It tells a story about who the character is. This not only helps the actor get into the character, it helps them and the audience understand the character, their background, journey, social status, lifestyle, and more. Oftentimes, important character transformations can be conveyed through costume. A good costume will work with the character, hand in hand, not for the character or the other way around. And the costume will work hand in hand with the story that it's a part of. Does the character wear silk or linen? What can they afford and what can they acquire? Is the garment embellished or simple? Is it a certain color, and why that particular color? What does the character do in that costume? Are they expected to lounge around, or do they have to go into battle, on a journey? If so, what does the character require from the costume? Must the costume provide him or her warmth, protection, concealment of weapons? If so, what sort of armor is best suited for the character in question from a practical standpoint, from a social structure standpoint? Will it reflect the culture that the character is a part of? You as an audience member will not be consciously considering these questions, 
But when you design outfits, you should take all of this into account. Not simply say, this will do, put more gold here, sprinkle some there. This symbol is cool, let's use it. What is the crest? Can you tell us what the crest is on her armor? We would need Kate Holly here, who has done a wonderfully deep dive with every single filigree, every single crest, every single uh, detail, and, and uh, the things we've, we've discussed. A good costume is also balanced. Harmony is key. Look at the lines here in Disa's costume. You have the long vertical line created by the Roman-style draping of the fabric and how it hangs on her body, but the vertical is cut because of this section here, the belt. Which is fine, because you are trying to make her appear shorter, since she is a dwarf. But then you look at the other lines, and you have triangles, which, fair enough, do make a vertical line here too, but they're still triangles on their own. And you also have a half circle in the necklace, ovals in the bangles, this coil-like addition here above the leg slit, and then the boots with a face on them. Look at these ridiculously heavy, solid gold boots against the light fabric of the dress. You wouldn't put a lady into a robe à l'anglaise and stuff her feet into some sturdy leather boots. Most of the elements in this outfit are very disconnected in terms of lines, weight, and style. You could go for gold statement pieces paired with a simple dress, but then the dress should at least be structured so as to not clash with the heaviness of the statement necklace, but rather to complement it. This dress in particular is not a form-fitting, structured, tailored cut. It's drapey and loose and pleated. There is too much going on in regards to the shapes and lines, and not enough harmony is created between the jewelry style and the dress style. If we turn a blind eye to the low-quality appearance of the fabrics used, we can notice a few good things in Gilgalad's costume. I'd say they're going for some symmetry, as indicated with these crossed straps, and one pin on each side of his shoulders, and even with the crown shape. Draw a vertical line down the center, and you get two sides that are exactly the same. I think that's why this costume, at least in shape and fit, looks decent, but the problem here are mainly the materials. And also, I'm not sure why there was this need for these abstract round shapes around the color. Those stand out a bit and don't really go with the rest of the outfit. Next, let's look at Tarmiriel's outfit, which has so much going on. It almost feels like each element of the garment is its own thing. The cape, the upper section of the dress, the middle part with the scales, the belt, the lower half... There is no connection between them. Look at Arwen's dress for comparison. There are two very contrasting colors, and there is this gold embroidery, but visually the design comes together beautifully. Tarmuriel's dress does not. Vertical lines in the fabric pleating, circular scales that start out of nowhere. The light-looking fabric versus rigid, heavy-looking scales and the thick, heavy-looking cape. Next, what seems to be silver or ivory belt and ivory dress versus gold bangles and a golden crown. There is so much happening in this one look that it's distracting, and even the fit is a bit questionable since there seems to be some bunching happening here in the middle, or maybe that's just how the scales are sewn on. Next, elves are supposed to be tall, magnificent creatures, which was very well depicted in The Lord of the Rings. Have you ever wondered why Galadriel in Amazon's The Rings of Power often looks just like a plain old human? Well, it's not really a mystery that it's the outfits they put her in that create such an impression. But that silver armor aside, you've already heard me say a few words about this blue dress. But I think I should repeat it here because this dress is so close to being good and close to doing a similar thing that the elven costumes in Lord of the Rings did, yet one thing completely destroys that chance. The design of the dress creates two lines that visually cut her body in half, right here where this darker fabric starts. This disrupts the long vertical line that we would otherwise get, that Nyla Dixon, the costume designer for the Peter Jackson trilogy, mentions was so vital for the elves in her designs, to create that elongated, floaty silhouette that worked so well. What I was looking for was the sense that these people were not of this earth. So I hung all the elf costumes off the tops of their bodies, so giving them as much length as I possibly could to accentuate this idea that these elves were much taller than man. It's a shame in this case, since the fabric itself looks quite nice, but the lines are the thing that ruins the potential for that graceful elven look. I want to finish on another positive, so I'll talk about our Farazon's outfit. Not this one. This one. 
I would say that this outfit is one of the better designs from the Rings of Power. The color looks rich and not artificial, there aren't too many details and the ones that are present look okay. There is some actual embroidery around the neckline, not a print, which is nice to see, and the gold looks to be a better shade than in Gilgalad's case. There is an interesting balance between this embellished part and the plain part, since one side has a printed cape and the other side some gold links, like a chain that merges with the belt. I don't really know how to describe this, but you know what I'm talking about. There are two types of lines that work hand in hand. These circular organic lines and vines, or whatever is on this pattern, is certainly not rigid and geometrical. And there is this rectangle here, but it doesn't really disrupt the look since there is also a long rectangular line here on the hem and a visual rectangle that is created by the garment design and the design as a whole. Also very important is the overall fit, which looks good and flattering, unlike some designs. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please don't forget to like and leave me a comment down below. I'm planning to make a follow-up video with the focus on fabrics, details and colors, so consider subscribing if you don't want to miss that. Feel free to check out my other videos on the Rings of Power, which will be linked in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.